Great. Uh, well, good evening. Uh, my name is Alan Bombardier. I am the project manager with the U.S. General Services Administration. I'll be the project manager for the Richford Port of Entry Project, and I'll be your host for this evening. So on behalf of the General Services Administration, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, our goal tonight is pretty much, it's simple. We want to introduce ourselves, explain a little bit about what GSA does. Uh, we want to give you a high level overview of the land port of entry here at Richford about the project. Uh, keeping in mind that we're in the very early stages of this project, uh, very early stages of design. Um, most importantly, we want to hear from you. We want to hear about your experiences at the port, um, any planned projects in the area, whether they're town, regional, or state projects, um, and any community interests uh, that we should be aware of as we're planning for this project. So again, my name is Alan Bombardier, the project manager. Um, here tonight I have um, Sarah Massarello, who's the uh, site program manager, and I also have Jane Urban, who is our NEPA specialist. Uh, and we also have the Assistant Vice President and Environmental Planner, uh, Ryan Long, with WSP. Uh, so an overview. Um, I'm not sure if many of you have uh, heard of GSA or what GSA is, uh, but GSA is primarily, uh, primarily uh, has two main divisions. We have the Public Building Service, or PBS, and we have the Federal Acquisition Service, uh, FAS. Uh, so GSA through the Public Building Service, we're basically the landlords for the government. So we own the federal properties, and we manage those properties for our federal, uh, for, for our federal agencies, for our partners, uh, for space, um, and then we manage those, those properties as well. Um, uh, so uh, the FAS, or Federal Acquisition Service, they're essentially the purchasing agent for the government. Uh, so as the centralized procurement arm for the government, uh, FAS GSA offers products, services, and facilities that are needed uh, for our federal agencies to serve the public. Um, so an overview of the, the program. So the program is the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. Uh, so in February of 2022, GSA received $3.4 billion uh, nationally to invest in the nation's infrastructure and competitiveness. Uh, the law provides funding for land port of entry modernizations uh, that will create new good paying jobs, uh, bolster security, bolster safety and, and security, and make our economy more resilient to supply chain challenges, as well as uh, being a model for sustainability and uh, innovations. Uh, that legislation provided nearly $2 million, or $200 million to five land port of entry projects here in Vermont, Richard being one of them. Uh, the other ports um, are Alberg Springs, BB Plain, Highgate Springs, and Norton. So beyond making these border crossings more functional, sustainable, and secure, the investment will foster economic growth and job creation in surrounding communities. Uh, so the purpose of tonight, so scoping, scoping is an early uh, public involvement process um, that will help determine issues for um, environmental assessments that we'll be addressing. Uh, GSA welcomes your input on the resources and issues that are important to you. So again, tonight we'll share some project information with you, we'll describe the NEPA process um, and next steps and we'll provide you with information on how to comment um, on this project. Um, so the purpose of the project, the purpose of the project is, is uh, to modernize the Richford Land Port of Entry to address this GSA and the CBP needs as well as the needs of the public. Uh, we'll increase, it'll increase the inspection and overall operational capabilities of the port meet new and evolving security requirements, incorporate some new sustainability uh, features and some um, upgraded technologies, It'll increase resilience to climate change, allow for easier and safer public flow through the port, and it's also gonna resolve some of the uh, foundational and structural issues uh, with the port of entry. 
So again, thanks for being here tonight, and I'll turn it over to Ryan. Thanks, Al. Uh, again, my name is Ryan Long with WSP. Uh, we are a consulting firm that's helping GSA uh, meet the National Environmental Policy Act requirements for this project. Um, so just to give you a kind of a brief overview, uh, anytime the federal government does a project that's either on federal land or receives federal dollars, they're kind of required to analyze the environmental and social impacts of that project. And the kind of overarching uh, act that drives that is the National Environmental Policy Act, known as NEPA. There are three general levels of NEPA. Uh, the environmental assessment process, which we expect this to be, is the middle stage. Uh, that is when there are potential environmental impacts or social impacts that uh, need to be examined. If those impacts are determined to be significant or that they cannot be mitigated, then it would bump it up to the next level, the highest level, which is environmental impact statement. For this specific project, we don't believe that will be the case. We think it will stay as an environmental assessment, meaning that any potential impacts will either be low level or uh, they can be mitigated so that they are not significant to the public. So uh, through this process, uh, there are multiple opportunities uh, for the public to provide input. And uh, as Alan mentioned, any, any concerns you may have or resource areas that you think need to be examined, uh, issues that you feel needs to be looked at uh, in depth in the environmental assessment. Uh, this is the first of those opportunities, the public scoping period. So we'll take your input and um, you know, include it into the environmental assessment. And then if, in fact, those uh, discussions result in you know, impacts or as the process progresses through the draft EA stage, uh, there will be an opportunity for you to, again, comment on that document. So, um, we'll go through the schedule here very shortly, but essentially uh, you know, early next year uh, is when uh, that public comment period is expected to take place. Uh, so again, all, all written or verbal comments that are received during either this scoping period or the next period will be incorporated into the analysis and we will ensure that um, your concerns are examined in the environmental assessment. So again, the, uh, the National Environmental Policy Act really is kind of seen as that umbrella policy. Uh, a lot of the resource areas that are examined under it and the acts that also determine the analysis of those resources, such as water, historic resources, uh, air, endangered species and environmental justice concerns, they all have their own, their own regulatory requirements, their own acts, their own executive orders, and NEPA really is that umbrella policy that covers all of it. So all of those various resource areas will be taken into account and examined through the NEPA process. So again, schedule. Um, the environmental assessment process starts with uh, the notification in local newspapers. Uh, that occurred along with numerous other uh, outreach methods that occurred uh, over the last few weeks. And that started the scoping period. Uh, so that started on September 6th. That will go for 30 days uh, through October 5th. Again, that input will be incorporated into the environmental assessment, which will be expected to be released early next year. Uh, and then again, another public comment period will occur during that period uh, for uh, the public and regulatory agencies will have a chance to review the document and 
uh, provide additional input if there are areas that uh, that you feel are deficient we'll beef those up um, and then again the the EA will be finalized if it is determined that there are no significant impacts from any of the resource areas uh, GSA will develop a, a FONSI which is a finding of no significant impact and that will ultimately lead to uh, the decision notice being issued and the NEPA process being completed uh, again that's uh, one step in the process, uh, as Alan kind of touched on, uh, it's a, a bit of a, a long process. We have design, we have NEPA, we have construction. So this is a, a small piece of the puzzle. So again, uh, various resource areas have been identified to, to look at in the environmental assessment. Uh, you know, wide ranging, everything from geology and soils to utilities and solid waste, lighting, traffic. Uh, there is a, a wide range of resource areas that are typically examined. Uh, and again, we, we do want to make sure we, we get your feedback and input to ensure that the resource areas that are of most concern to you are not only examined, but examined in the level of detail necessary to fully uh, analyze the potential impact on them. So just a, a few of the resources where uh, some initial efforts have already taken place to uh, calculate uh, the potential for uh, impact. Um, water resources, which includes wetlands. Uh, so wetland delineations uh, have taken place uh, for most of the area. Uh, and those delineations, the findings, have been presented to the Corps of Engineers in the state of Vermont, uh, the Department of Environmental Cons Conservation. Uh, those findings have been uh, agreed on by the, the Corps of Engineers and the state. And so ultimately, uh, now that we know where the wetlands are and what potential, um, uh, what what type they are, rather, and where they are, uh, any potential impacts on them from the site design uh, can be analyzed. And again, very similar process took place with threatened and endangered species. We examined the proposed project area, looked at what species were uh, in the area, what habitat uh, for potentially protected species was in the area. Ultimately, no species of concern from, uh, as far as fish and wildlife is concerned, are in the area. Uh, just to, to note, there is a candidate species, which is the monarch butterfly. Uh, if the status of that species were to happen to change any time between now and whenever construction takes place, GSA would uh, you know, consult with Fish and Wildlife to ensure that any potential impacts would be captured. And again, similar process uh, took place for, for uh, historic and cultural resources. Uh, you know, there is a, a section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act that requires uh, GSA to examine and consider the effects on historic properties. Uh, the State Historic Preservation Office uh, for the state of Vermont kind of uh, controls those uh, consultations and discussions. Uh, we have had discussions with the SHPO to start the consultation process and uh, are in, in process of developing uh, reports for the potential archaeological uh, resources that may be in the area and potential historic resources that may be in the area, such as buildings. And in this particular case, the main port building uh, is located on the National Register of Historic Places. And so the, the potential impacts to that facility and any others uh, that are deemed uh, critical resources will be examined in the environmental assessment. So again, uh, you know, your comments really are dictating how the NEPA process goes. Uh, we, we welcome any feedback uh, that you have, any concerns that you may have, resources that you want examined. Um, there are a number of different ways uh, to comment. Um, 
one of which is in person here tonight. Uh, there are comment forms available in the back of the room. You can fill that out. You can take it with you and mail it in. You can leave it here with us. Um, we have a stenographer uh, that will be capturing your comments if you choose to speak uh, during the open comment period. Uh, if you would like to stay until the comment period ends and sit down with the stenographer, we can do it that way as well. There's also a project email address that you can email comments to. So again, just to highlight a uh, number of different methods, but um, comments are due by October 5th. Alan, you want me to take this one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, so uh, again, it doesn't look like we have any virtual attendees, so some of the, the commenting etiquette um, is not applicable, um, but obviously we'll, we'll open it up to the room. Anyone that, that wishes to provide a comment is, is obviously more than welcome. Uh, we do have a, a microphone. I don't know how well the, the sound will be able to be picked up, but if we need to, um, we'll, we'll certainly pass that around. Uh, please say your name uh, and spell it if it is um, difficult <laughs> to spell. And, uh, and then we will, um, generally speaking, you know, try to keep your comments to a few minutes. Um, I don't think we're going to exhaust our comment period, so we can always circle back if you have additional comments to, to present. Uh, and then, again, just, just for awareness, I, I think it's probably clear to everyone in the room, but we are recording it, so any comment that you make will be recorded. It will be um, made available as part of the administrative record, which captures the, uh, the decision-making process uh, that goes on during the environmental assessment. So, Al, anything else you want to throw the in? Only thing, the only thing I wanted to add is that we do have a project information um, uh, site on our GSA website, and I just wanted to point out, you know, it's, it's gsa.gov backslash r1 and in the search box just type Richford um, and it, it'll pop right up. I did it this morning to make sure that I was saying right thing <laughs> and it was definitely as simple as that. So gsa.gov backslash r1 and again type Richford in the search box and it'll pop right up. You click the link and it'll give you a project fact sheet, information about the project, um, the most recent press releases, um, and then just the most up-to-date timelines as we're going through this process. So on behalf of GSA and WSP, thank you for being here and we'll open up for, yep. for comments. And just uh, to add on to Alan's statement, uh, all the materials from tonight's meeting, the, the posters that are in the back of the room, this presentation, as well as uh, a, the video of this meeting will also go up on the, the GSA's project website as well. Yes, so just for clarity, there will be a second opportunity uh, to provide public input as well early next year. So again, just uh, you know, comments tonight will be incorporated into the document. The document will be released for public uh, review. And then during that comment period, you'll have an opportunity to actually comment on what the document says and the findings in it. So all that being said, does anyone wish to make a comment or a statement? I just, this may not even be the time. Yeah, can you state your name, please? Paul Mark. Uh, is, in comparison to the Pinnacle and that port up there, is this port going to be like three times the size of the Pinnacle one? That hasn't really been determined on you, the size. You haven't even decided in your blueprints. We, we have very, 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 very early stages okay. of a concept design. So we're looking, we're really looking at just what we can and cannot do. Um, 
part of this process or the NEPA process will help determine what we can and cannot do. Okay. So right now I don't have an answer for you. I'm jumping the gun. Um, and I think the second meeting that we're talking about for early in 2025, we'll have more information for you then. Um, but right now, again, we're so early in the process, we really don't have a lot of that information for you. CVP or Customs and Border Protection owned facility. It's not a GSA right. facility. Right. So the Army Corps of Engineers is who, who uh, designed and constructed that for Customs. So I don't know a lot about that particular port. I know where it is, I've been there, but I don't know a lot about it. Okay, so the structure that you possibly have in mind, mm -hmm. would it, is it possibly mocking that structure? I mean, you must have, I'm sure that someone has a blueprint of some kind of structure that they have in mind for the, the Aberforn Port of Entry. What I can, what I know at this point, what I can say and what I know, um, again, very early stages, um, there are, there is a CBP prototype that, that CBP strives to, to meet as far as a port layout. But that all depends on what you can and cannot do um, in the local area, based on the NEPA process, based on cost, based on uh, you know topography of the land. So there is a potential for, let's say, a, a building in the middle of a road, kind of like you see at, let's say, a Highgate Springs. I don't know if you guys have been to Highgate Springs. There are also our layouts where um, the road stays exactly where it is and the building stays where exactly where it is. Um, we have many layouts that were that are being developed but it's just again so early that we can't pick one or the other because it's just way too early to point out. And we would just give you false information at that point and we don't want to do that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, so I'm the real estate specialist in the area. Um, I just wanted to, oh, we're you. We're you. <laughs> I just wanted to add on to the comment that what would be helpful for us, especially if, um, since you're a landowner in the area that's within the study area, if you have a preference or uh, a comment that you would like to make, like you would like the building to stay on that side of the road. You would like it to go to the other side of the road. You would like it to go north or south or something like that, or you'd like us to study where that might go in that specific way that might be helpful to you or that, that you would prefer, that would be helpful for us to get comments about that. So as we're getting into the concept design and considering the topography, considering um, the different parcels of land, um, that would be helpful for us if you want us to think about that and analyze it. So just to kind of give ideas about the kind of comments that would be helpful for us, if not tonight, but over the next 30 days, are. What might you want to see? Where might you want it to be? Or what would you like us to study? That kind of information and comments, um, as opposed to us, we don't have answers necessarily, like um, Alan was saying. So let us know what you what you would like us to do or what you would like us to study doing. That would be helpful to us. If that's more of a clarifying angle of trying to help us get the information that would be helpful. It is important for us to understand what the community is looking for. So, again. Um, I think there might be yeah, there's some comments some coming online. in. Yeah, there's sure anybody else there. in the room have any comments or questions? Yes, ma'am. Michelle Petro, do you have a map of what you deem as wetland there? We do have a map. If we don't have it in this presentation. Okay, is that something we can get? 
Yeah, well, it's, it's part of the analysis, so when we provide more information, we'll be including to pop, so, sorry. <coughs> you can hear me, but I folks online might not be able to. Um, so yeah, we'll be including maps that have the topography, the wetlands, um, cultural resource study areas, and things of that nature. Um, so those are still being developed and analyzed right now, but yes, that'll all be shared with you. Anyone else in the room before we turn it over to our virtual attendees? This might be too early to ask, but um, is there any plan? Michelle, take Is there any plans for widening the road? Um, I would never say that that's under consideration because it's a, you know, a modernization project. This building and the port is from the 1930s, so looking at how best does traffic move through the area, you know, does it make sense to retain it? Does it make sense to expand it? So I don't, we don't know, but it's definitely being studied, absolutely. probably have some questions from our yes. virtual attendees. We have someone's hand raised as well. Okay, we'll let, um, can you unmute your laptop? That one. Set it right here. <laughs> we will do this. All right, Janessa, I'm gonna turn it over to you to unmute or, or raise the hand of whoever. Chuck has his hand raised, so I'm going to allow him to talk. Okay. Chuck, go ahead. Please state your name. I think you might be on mute. We're not hearing anything here in the room. Is that, is that just us? Now, staying on the side, I can also read the comment here. Amanda mentioned that our concern at this stage is the field entrance across the railroad tracks. We are concerned to make sure traffic crossing into field has clear visibility both ways for safety. No, that makes sense. Um, Ooh, was it bouncing off? Okay. Thank you. Janessa, anything else? Anything else online? Okay. Open it back up to anyone in the room. port and just to the south of it there's a, a road that crosses the tracks 
So her comment was um, wanting to make sure that that crossing, you know, if anything is going on with it, that it's the safety of the trucks crossing the cro crossing, crossing the crossing, is under consideration. Uh, making sure that we speak with them about how trucks are using that, and that it's, that we think about the safety of the trucks at the crossing. Let me ask one other thing, Paul Mar. I'm a retired fire chief here. Um, it's always been a, a concern for the fire department that if anything happens at the fort, there's no way that you can come down the hill and see the fort from a quarter mile away. Of course, again, on the interstate in Vermont, same thing. But anyways, no, um, I just would take into consideration to have a clear line of sight up the road or something for emergencies at the fort. Does that make sense to you? And what I did a number of years ago, there's a small patch of land between the port and Canada. We went in and we were going to cut all the trees out of there. But I was told by the custom people that was their land, get the hell out. <laughs> but now looking at your chart there, they don't own it, do they? Anyways, here. <laughs> I said it. Thank you. traffic uh, coming in from Canada and and maybe even going north to connect to some of the rail trails in Canada. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, recreation is one of the resources that is examined as part of the environmental assessment process. So that's definitely something that will be examined to make sure that we're capturing um, any of those potential impacts. And I will add that on the, on the project side, the, the bike traffic coming in the U.S. Uh, through the port has been discussed. So it is something that, again, we are looking at at the project level. Anyone online have any questions or comments? Okay, well, hearing none, um, we can adjourn. So before we do that, one last call for comments. Anyone online would like to make a comment, question, statement, please raise your hand. staying here for a short period of time after we adjourn um, in case we have some late attendees or other someone can think of other comments so on the <laughs> yes of course uh, and we have a comment period of 30 days and that expires the 5th of October um, comment sheets in the back uh, the project website again, richford.lpoe.gsa.gov. And again, just thank you a lot. Appreciate you coming out.